new worlds, massive wars, and living a whole new life. Hello, I'm GamerZack and welcome to my 20 upcoming PC MMORPG games in 2019 and 2020 list. Now, every year people compare upcoming MMOs to the greats of the past, but you have to remember that even in the best of years, we only got three or four MMOs that stood the test of time. In this list we have 20 games, plus bonus ones at the end, so be sure to watch all the way through, but it's likely only a few will really make a mark. Which do you think it'll be? For now, let's see what's on the way. First up, we've got Gloria Victus by Black Eye Games. Considering itself a low fantasy game akin to medieval Europe and the Middle East, this is an open world sandbox with nations, religions, and dynamic weather where you can craft, build, and do battle. Questing will be non-linear and combat is action-based with no targeting and includes territory control and naval battles. Meanwhile, PvP is open all over the map except for some safe zones and there there are punishments for killing allies. There is PvE too if you're looking for that. Now currently in Alpha, the lowest backer price point is 20 US dollars or your regional equivalent on Steam, where it had mixed reviews for early access but more recently has become mostly positive. There's no clear release window besides it being in Alpha at the moment though, so time will tell if Gloria Victus will succeed to bring glory to the genre or not. Next we have Project Gorgon by Elder Game. Enter an immersive sandbox world where you can forge your own path. Highlighted features are randomly generated loot, unique monsters, along with trap and puzzle filled dungeons with bosses at the end. Your character uses a skill based leveling system and combat is tab targeting. Also noting that PvP is not the focus here. The game is in early access on Steam going for $40 or your regional equivalent and has very positive reviews. There's also a demo you can check out. In general, it seems like an MMO that's calling back to the old school style. The original goal was to be in early access for a year, but it's already past that target. So hopefully the delay doesn't affect the game negatively and we'll see a completed Project Gorgon not too long from now. Now for one that's got quite a bit of attention, it's Ashes of Creation by Intrepid Studios. Promising a world where everything is permanently impacted by your actions, you have the usual trappings of exploring, trading, crafting, and building where cities will rise and fall. The game is meant to keep the best of traditional MMORPGs while innovating on sandbox concepts in an open world. Quest lines will open and close depending on the world's state, while sieges and combat will include PvE against monsters and PvP to control points of interest using a tab targeting action combat hybrid system. There's a standalone free to play prequel called Apocalypse that focuses on the combat, so that gives us a better look at gameplay. Important to note, the entry fee is a bit steep at $75 being the cheapest package, so you can decide if that's worth it. The game is scheduled to be playable in 2019, and if this sounds like your thing, check it out and see if it really delivers that sense of consequence for your actions, or whether Ashes of Creation's world is left a bit barren post-apocalypse. For something that looks a little bit different, it's Mad World by Jandisoft. Okay, I know at first glance this is going to confuse a lot of you. It really doesn't look like what you'd expect to see in an MMORPG list nowadays, and that's because this uses a HTML5 engine and is browser-based. Don't write it off completely just yet, as it's still aiming to be a fully-fledged MMO. The world is not quite an open world, with everything taking place on many smaller maps stitched together. Questing and NPCs are designed to have personality and uniqueness, and you'll be meeting horrific monsters in PvE. Combat is a combination of tab, target, and non-targeting, while it's said to be able to support hundreds of players in a single PvP match. It's also planning to release as a free-to-play game on multiple platforms and be cross-platform compatible. Summer 2019 is the release window right now, and although this isn't going to be for everyone, Mad World might be something just a little different for the genre, which can be nice if the gameplay is actually engaging. Moving on, we've got Legends of Aria by Citadel Studios. 
Discover a world forged by players and your choices write the story. Saying that it's a return to a true skill-based system, progress your character the way you want as you explore and build in an open world sandbox. Combat is tab targeting and PvP is the focus. Although there is some PvE, it's a bit of a concern how hostile the world could become while that aspect is still in the works. Community servers and modding are also a big point allowing players to run their own servers and that the whole game is built to be modded from top to bottom. The game is playable now in a developmental state and the early access digital copy is going for 30 US dollars, which is on the cheaper side of many of the MMOs in this list. But there's a lot riding on the community to boost Legends of Aria's value. Ascending to the skies, it's Ascent Infinite Realm by Blue Hole Studios. Steampunk, airships, dragons, and magic are the premise of this open-world MMORPG, which is from the same developers as Terra and PUBG. So think of that what you will. Characters have a class-based system and you'll have the usual player housing, with various forms of PvE and PvP. Combat is tab target, which has been said to look pretty good, but it's hard to say for sure at this point. There is a concern about the state of the game and its developers, especially considering the official trailer itself is laggy, and it's aiming to be a free-to-play title, which has its risks too. So I'd be cautious, and if you're interested, keep up with Ascent Infinite Realms development, and we'll see if it can ascend into a playable state. Drifting through the clouds, it's Worlds Adrift by Bossa Studios. Explore a shattered world as you build skyships and survive perils of the skies in this open world sandbox. Combat is about firing projectiles that are hit scan with guns and skyships with cannons. Having been in early access on Steam for a couple years now at 25 US dollars or your regional equivalent, it has a total of mostly positive reviews, though more recently the sentiment has been mixed. Negative reviews citing latency issues and bugs, and there is a big discussion about how the PvP is like in terms of griefing, though there are PvE servers now. The game being a sandbox is also a point to note as there aren't really NPCs or quest lines or things like that, so most of the experience relies on the players, which I know is not everyone's cup of tea. Development has been going along though, and lots of new things have been added over the past year. So if you're curious but not convinced, then the next year of progress should make it clear if Worlds Adrift is for you or not. For more of a science fiction approach, we've got Population Zero by Nplex Games, a sci-fi sandbox survival game about surviving on a harsh alien world and trying to make it your home, all the while you suffer from mutations caused by the environment. The world is meant to be about 24 square kilometers large, supporting several hundred players, which is a much larger number than the usual survival sandbox type game. Fair warning, this is a full loot PvP game, but they are working on systems to prevent griefing, like keeping veteran players fighting amongst themselves and not bullying newcomers. As usual, there are founder packages with the cheapest going for 20 US dollars. And there are concerns that it's just going to be another buggy mess, as is common with this type of game. However, closed and open beta is scheduled for later 2019, at which point we'll be able to see exactly what kind of game Population Zero mutates into. And now for a series of games inspired by the old City of Heroes, starting with City of Titans by Missing Worlds Media. Working with character archetypes that you can choose from, be a hero or villain, completing quests in a metropolis. Interestingly, procedural interiors are a thing for some quests too. When we looked at the game last year, it was still extremely rough, but more recent updates and reveals have started to provide more clarity in terms of what the game is actually going to be like. Originally aiming for some kind of release in 2018, the game has been delayed, and it's hard to say when a full release will happen. It did raise over 670,000 US dollars on Kickstarter, but that was way back in 2013, and money doesn't last forever. Considering last year's progress, it should be reasonable to see something proper from City of Titans over the next year or so. Staying with Heroes, it's Ship of Heroes by Heroic Games. A superhero MMORPG that aims to be the best of space and hero games combined. 
Here, you can be a hero in a dangerous galaxy as you defend a city against criminals and alien invaders. Customize your hero's design, develop your playstyle, rise through the ranks, and gain fame. PvE and PvP, along with harvesting, crafting, and trade, are part of this game, and combat is tab-targeting, where you can switch out powers for duels, or to stack them and complement your teammates. Monetization of the game will be using a subscription model, which I know many prefer, but it's important to mention. The game has been making progress over the years, and a playable release is tentatively looking at the end of 2019, though I wouldn't be surprised if Ship of Heroes takes a bit longer than that to take off. For one more hero MMO, it's Valiance Online by Shogun. Labeled a living world superhero MMO, it's the 22nd century and mankind has discovered how to harness a new kind of magical energy in a city where you can become a great hero or a fearsome villain. Create your character with a primary and secondary archetype, each defining your role and powers. The game is PvE, with PvP zones and events, while combat is tab-targeting. It's an alpha now, and the cheapest entry fee is $25, US dollars, which still is on the cheaper side for this list. Though I'll note that the production of the game has been going on for a few years now, and outside of their Discord it's hard to find any new information about the game, which does cause concern. Hopefully development ramps up over the next year or so, and we'll get a clearer understanding of what Valiance Online could be on release over time. And now for something different with Conqueror's Blade by Booming Games. Kind of like a combination of Total War and For Honor with Eastern and Western civilizations. This is an MMO centered around massive battles and one-on-one -on -one duels in the middle of them as you conquer territories in a world sandbox. Quests are limited time events and specific territory wars are scheduled at the moment. Combat is meant to be smooth action with tactical control over cores, with PvP and PvE, while the business model is looking to be free to play, which means the most people can join the battle to boost the scale, but further monetization and quality of community is always a concern. The game is meant to have more playable events through 2019, and we can expect Conqueror's Blade to become consistently playable over the next year or so. Then for one that piqued a few people's interests, it's New World by Amazon Game Studios. Join forces with others to colonize, build, craft, and survive as you fight against raiders, the wilderness, and gathering evil. When Amazon announced that they're making an MMO, it did raise some eyebrows, but so far it does seem to be shaping up to be something proper. The topic of colonizing the new world has stirred some controversy, but those flames might be fanned by Amazon itself having its own controversies. Servers are intending to launch being able to support 500 players, and there's a goal to raise that to 10,000 using cloud technology, which would be important when it comes to the territorial wars and establishing of communities. Characters are classless, and although there is combat, you should be able to avoid it as not everyone needs to be a fighter. The game sounds impressive, and with Amazon behind it, the budget required to do something like this isn't an issue. Though at the time of making this video, the official YouTube channel only has a clip of running through the environment. So let's see how New World gets developed over the next year. And then a strange one with ReWorld Online by QWERTY Studio Inc. Not to be confused with the other ReWorld, this is a game inspired by Ultima Online and Gary's Mod? That's an odd combination that could be a great idea or just a bit weird. Gather, craft, build, and fish, and your character won't have classes, and there's a skill system with no maximum level. Fully customizable private servers that can support thousands of players, procedural worlds, and a town system with building and prosperity are also a thing. It's a PvP full loot system, and combat is tab target. The game is meant to be free to play, but there are paid for passes, with the cheapest one being 20 US dollars, though not being paid to win is a priority. I'd tread lightly when it comes to this project, which could be good if things work as advertised, but it needs more time, and only time will tell for ReWorld. Going to one that we've been watching for a few years now, it's Camelot Unchained by City State Entertainment. Choose from one of three realms to make a name for yourself and rebuild the world. Characters from different factions can choose from a variety of classes, leveling is horizontal progression, and combat is a component combat system. 
with player-created abilities and individual body part damage, making combat very modular in many ways which could be interesting. There will also be realm v realm PvP with PvE for things like dungeons, monsters and animals. Monetization is a subscription method, with a pledge to not have any thinly veiled cash grabs, while currently for pre-ordering the cheapest package is 35 US dollars for beta 2 access and 60 US dollars for beta 1 access. We've been watching this one for a while, and it has raised over 5 million dollars, so budget shouldn't be a problem. Beta 1 launched in mid-2018 with three stages of beta planned, and there is a kind of goal for full launch in 2019, but I would be surprised if it hit that target. A 2020 release does seem more possible though, so hopefully Camelot Unchained will be releasing without too many more delays, and it will be in a state to deliver all the massive promises. And then for a couple Asian MMOs, starting with Astelia Online by Berenson Entertainment. A classical MMORPG striving to return to the roots of the genre, characters have the traditional tank, healer, DPS role options, but the classic classes are made flexible when it comes to skills and abilities. Combat is tab target with active dodging, and the game has PvE dungeons and arenas that you can do solo or teamed up. Meanwhile, PvP is in the arena and persistent faction warfare, promising no griefing. Interestingly, there's a companion system where you can collect and level up Astels that you kind of control. Having launched recently in South Korea, Summer 2019 is the intended Western release, and although the game is free to play in the East, it's going to be buy to play in the West. I know many have been waiting a long time for this one, as it's been a seven year development time, which could mean that this release is really polished, but it's not a guarantee. Asian MMOs don't always get a global release, so if you're looking for one that is, check out Estelia Online. One more from the East, it's Lost Ark by Smilegate. An action MMORPG with gameplay along the lines of Diablo or Path of Exile, where you can explore a vast world. Characters are class-based with 12 to choose from, and combat is non-target, action-oriented, with plenty of PvE dungeons, while PvP is in arenas and large-scale battles. It's not all fighting though, as mining, hunting, minigames and a card game are a part of the game too. Although it's not getting a proper Western release at the moment, the game is coming to Russia first at least, and word is that the Russian version won't be region locked. It's unclear if there are any solid plans to localize to more regions, but I know many are hoping for just the chance to play Lost Ark without too many complications, and maybe that could be relatively soon. And then we've got Pantheon Rise of the Fallen by Visionary Realms. Set in a wildly diverse world, formed of fragments from different realms and times with a high fantasy theme. Character creation has races and classes with a progeny system too. Social aspects are a focus with friends, allies and cooperation as part of the core gameplay. Promising to be fundamentally different, colored mana, dynamic NPCs, a character-specific perception system, and combat has a kind of dual-tab target approach. PvE is the focus, but it's not just against NPCs, but also the world itself and the environments can affect your abilities, while PvP will be in shards. Monetization is going to be subscription based and claims it's not a casual game, and they're targeting a specific kind of player. Which means it's more of a niche game, but that could also limit its potential. Overall, it sounds very promising, with a lot of new approaches to old ideas. No dates are set in stone, but an alpha is predicted to happen in 2019 with a possible 2020 release, if Pantheon Rise of the Fallen manages to rise to the challenges of this genre's development. For one that's being considered pretty big, it's Chronicles of Illyria by Soulbound Studios. Living a life of meaningful existence and promising that the grind is gone from gameplay, the main feature that defines this game is that your character will die of old age after starting as a member of an NPC family and living a lifetime of adventuring, farming, sieging and governing. The world is meant to be a mix of theme park and sandbox, and combat is a kind of action system with a combination of player and character skill, requiring you to dodge, parry and manage stamina. 
PvP is heavily available, though stating it's rare in civilized areas, but no area is 100% safe. Cost of entry is 45 US dollars for the cheapest package, but if you want access to beta 2 and 1, you'll have to pay more than that. There are a lot of big promises here, and if they actually play as engaging as they sound, then this could be something special. Having raised almost 6 million dollars, it's a pretty big project, and the projected release date is the second half of 2019. Though as with any game on this list, I would not be surprised if Chronicles of Illyria got delayed into 2020. For our final entry, it's Crowfall by Artcraft Entertainment. Calling itself a throne war simulator, engage in territorial conquest as you amass wealth, gain power, and find relics. There's a concept of eternal heroes dying worlds, where your character will continue to exist, but the game follows seasons for campaigns, each lasting one to three months. Character classes and races are a thing, and certain classes are locked to certain races. Combat is action-oriented, but promises to not rely on fast-paced or twitchy reflexes, and the game has a PvP focus. Now, the release window is a little unclear, but the game is playable right now in testing phases, with the cheapest option being 50 US dollars, and the game intends to use a buy-to-play monetization system. One thing to consider is that the game has raised from crowdfunding and licensing a total of over $25 million, which is a crazy amount, but importantly does not necessarily guarantee a good game. But there are a lot of high expectations from Crowfall. And now for those bonus games I mentioned. Of course, we have to mention WoW Classic that is on the way. And it might be a good chance for people who have never played WoW before to get into the game, or for old veterans to reminisce. Meanwhile, Elder Scrolls Online is getting the Elsewhere expansion, and Final Fantasy XIV is getting the Shadowbringers expansion. And now for some MMOs that are on the horizon, which won't be releasing by 2020, there is the Magic the Gathering MMORPG that's still in development but no news about that. There's an Alien MMO that doesn't even really have a proper title yet but it has been announced. Project TL, which used to be called Lineage Eternal, it might go into closed beta in Korea in late 2019. Peria Chronicles also might go into testing in Asia later in 2019, but there's no real news there. Age of Wushu 2 is also kind of a thing, but again, nothing official has been said. And then there is Fractured MMO, which is targeting a 2021 release, the Saga of Lucemia by Stormhaven Studios, launching 2021 at earliest. And there is apparently a Lord of the Rings MMORPG, which we don't know a lot about, but the TV series is starting in 2021, so this will probably coincide with that. Also, just a reminder that Star Citizen and Dual Universe are usually talked about in the space list if you're wondering where those are. And that's it! 20 plus upcoming MMORPGs that should be releasing through 2019 and some into 2020, depending on their development. Which ones are you most excited about? Also, here's something I'd like to know. We know not all of these games are going to be successful, so if you could pick only two from this list, which two games do you think will stand the test of time? Now, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, check out the other lists on the channel sorted by genre shown at the top of the video for many more upcoming PC games, or my Gamer Encounter series where I take a much more extensive gameplay look at specific new games. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Remember to subscribe and to check out all the social medias I'm on, and I'll see you in the next video.